All right, hello everybody. I wanted to just go over and show everybody my new to me race car. It's a 1985 Toyota MR2. This has a great story. Um, back in the day, way back in the late 90s, I was working for a man. I was in the Coast Guard. He was my boss. We were, uh, I was an aircraft mechanic, and he was, like I say, he was our supervisor, our engineering officer. Um, he bought this car from a gentleman up in Michigan, I believe. Um, this gentleman built the car in 1989. And Purpose built it to be a GT3 car. Put the cage in it and all of that. Well, he moved on to something different. And my boss purchased the car. And so I was his pit helper for a while. And... We would work on the car on weekends, after work, <clears throat> stuff like that. Um, he always made sure to go to the SECA runoffs. And, <clears throat> sorry about that, and uh, compete there. Car did well, um, didn't, didn't win but always placed well. Um, and I'm just showing you as I talk here, I'll, I'll go into more detail. Um, I retired from the Coast Guard, <clears throat> and actually my supervisor retired a few years before me. Well, I moved back to Oregon, And he moved to Alabama. Well, in Alabama, you can't really find someone to purchase this type of car. Most of the people in Alabama, <clears throat> not all, but a majority, if you're trying to sell a car, they're looking for drag race cars. So, my boss, prior, prior boss calls me up and he says, hey, I need to get rid of this car and you're about the only person I know who can really appreciate what it is. And I said, oh, okay, <clears throat> what are we talking? And he says, um, I'm going to give you the car. And of course, I was just beside myself. I was like, you're going to what? He says, yeah, I'm going to give you the car. And sure enough, it took some work. It took a couple years to get all the details worked out. Um, he was able to bring the car partway cross country. And my brother-in-law just freaking killed it. He had a buddy that needed to get a car to Tennessee. And he says, hey, I got to get this car to Tennessee. What do you think about me stopping by and picking up the MR2 on the way back? And I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, let's do that. So, uh... Car ends up here. Um, car sat for about 20 years, I would say. And so I had quite a bit of work to do when I first got it here. I did make the first autocross, or the last, sorry, the last autocross of the season at Kaiser Volcano Stadium. And that's those... 
videos are up on my my channel as well. Uh, I had to replace the foam in the fuel cell. Um, I had a couple fuel leaks I had to take care of. Of course, change the oil. Um, just basic stuff like that. The seat had to had to do some reshaping of the seat. My wife just did absolutely amazing um, with recovering this seat. Um, the reason the reason it looks like it's a little rough here is we actually did some foaming to make it fit. Uh, but just she just did an amazing job with recovering that seat. So the other thing I had to do was the exhaust. I had to completely rebuild the exhaust because it had a super trap on it and super trap is not allowed. So I got a little more work to do. Um, actually have to do a repair on it. So, but there it is right there. So made it to the last autocross of the year. Um, and by the end of the day, uh, it had valve stem seals leaking, <clears throat> so I'd get a pretty good puff of smoke um, upon acceleration. Every time I would take off, it would it would smoke pretty good, loose smoke out the exhaust. Um, two of the four shocks completely shot, leaking fluid on the ground. So I've just gone through the process of rebuilding the strut assemblies <clears throat> and I've also gone and done a spring change so here's there's the strut tube so had to extend it slightly because the uh, the new shocks that I could find, the closest ones I could find, were actually slightly longer. Oh, sorry about that, guys. But yeah, just slide your shock down inside there, and uh, screw the collar back on. The car had 375 springs all the way around. Um, I'm not really sure why the guy that built the car did that, um, but I believe the car hadn't been on scales in years. Put it on scales <coughs> and uh, adjusted minor adjustments, got everything as close as I could, and uh, went out for that autocross and the car pushed really bad uh, we fixed it as best we could to get through the day with air pressure which did help a ton um, but still it just wasn't I mean rode like a buckboard beat the tar out of you so these are also not these are not autocross tires so see if I can see it on here yeah, there it is. RS4s. These are actually endurance tires. They're what I have right now. Um, they're going to be on here for a while. I will autocross with them, but I want to be able to do a track day or two as well. And then when they get worn down and I have to replace them, then I'll, I'll look at getting something a little more oriented to autocrossing. So, all right, well, let's get into the, what the car actually is. Um, so it's a 4AGE, um, obviously, as you can see, twin cam 16 valve. Uh, this is a race built engine. It has probably about maybe seven or eight hours since rebuild, um, I think the valve stem seals were started leaking because it sat for so long. I'm I'm certain that's it. The compression numbers are phenomenal. 
cylinders when I boroscoped them looked fantastic. Um, all of that. So everything, everything's all good. Um, but like I say, it's a, it's a 10 to 1 motor. I'm not really sure what the horsepower is. I would guess it's no Formula Atlantic engine, which those are 240. So I would guess 180, maybe 200, something like that. I will tell you that it scoots. Um, Weber carburetors. These are the uh, 45 DCOE. What appears to be a stock transmission, actually transaxle, it is nothing nothing stock about it except for the case. It's got hardened gears. It's got limited slip. Um, it's got a performance clutch that's a super short throw. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a beast. So, um, I want to see if I can get this engine no longer has a distributor. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it. No. Um, it's got a crank trigger ignition. Uh, you can kind of see. Yeah, you can see it down there that wire going off right in the middle of the screen there so that's run by this guy right here of course so and by, by the way this was dyno tuned so it was done properly by a shop I have messed with the jetting a little bit. I think I have it a little too rich right now, so I'll have to put smaller jets in it. Um, but very simple, very simple thing to do. Um, those of you that don't know, this cap comes off right here, and the jets are underneath there, and you just pull them out, replace them. Not a big deal. So, um... Moving on, uh, so talked about the struts a little bit. So they are adjustable conies. So can't really see the rear too well, but basically you just put this, this knob on top of there and you can adjust it to uh, firmness or you can make it softer as need be. So, the car has one unique thing about it. Uh, well, a lot of unique things, but that right there, when the original builder of the car was going around corners at a high rate of speed, the oil was slinging in the oil pan, so he put that oil container in there, um, accumulator, and it also helps to make sure, so before you start the car, you flip that yellow valve, turn that pointed back towards the blue fitting, and you can just watch your oil pressure rise, and then crank it over and fire it up. So, works for a couple different purposes. So, um, it's got a full race setup as far as the brakes. There's, uh, you've got, you can see right there, front rear clutch. Um, there's a brake bias adjustment inside. So you can see right there. So, pretty sweet setup. Um, the duct tape. Not really sure about the duct tape. I'm sure some of you are going to have questions about that. Um, I mean, I know why it's there. It's there to force the air that's coming in the front to go through the radiator, hit this NACA duct, and come up over the, the car, come out there and come up over the top of the car. Um, I don't particularly care for this duct tape, and... I know there's a better way to do that. I think I'm probably going to end up putting a piece of lightweight aluminum in there and sealing it with some foam 
and uh, going from there. Uh, fuel filler is right here. Um, it is under the hood. If you look at the hood here, it would be right about in this location. And obviously there's no hole, so if this was ever going to be an endurance car or something like that, uh, probably have to make some changes because uh, that, that wouldn't work. So, but um, with the plans that I have for the car right now, like I said, autocross and, and track days here and there, that's going to work just fine. Some of the changes, one of the changes that was made um, since between the time that the guy bought the car, my boss, and then he sent it to me was a fuel gauge being put right there. So, which is pretty cool. Um, so, yes, it does work. It is full. But, so as you're dumping fuel in right here, you can see so you don't overfill the fuel level. <clears throat> this silver box in the car, that is an enclosure for the fuel cell. So, this has been a question for many... Uh, the tech inspectors across the United States with this car, including my autocross last year. They say you can't have the fuel cell in the passenger compartment. Well, the thing about it is, is there's a fuel cell, there's spacing around it, and then there's this, this metal box. So, um, what are the rules say about fuel cells? You have to have a firewall between the fuel cell and the driver. Well, that's met by that box, and it's a sealed box, totally sealed. So once you explain that to the tech inspectors, most of them, they're just racers like we are, and they say, okay, I, I don't like it, but I get it. So, I mean, it's, it's a foam-filled fuel cell and the whole bit. So, I mean, it's... It's not a it's not a pretend deal. It's it's the real deal. So um some other things I plan on doing is I need to clean up some of the metal. There's a lot of sharp edges that I want to take care of. Transponders right there. The battery, that's one thing the previous owner and I did. We moved the battery. You might be able to see it, but it's right underneath there. It's underneath that NACA duct. So we needed a little bit more weight in the front. It could always use weight in the front. They're a little light, so we, uh, we put the battery up there. It's kind of hard to do, and it's a, it's a Honda battery. You guys know what I'm talking about. They look like half of a Group 24, half of a standard battery. And because of the way the roll cage is down there with the crossing, how they X'd it, um, had to use a small battery, Toyota or Lexus. So, uh, even though there is adjustment, I don't know if we'll be able to see it, um, there is adjustment on these struts. For the camber, it's not enough. So, I went and I purchased these guys. So, these are, sorry, still new in the bag, but eccentric bolts that'll go in there and they'll help so we can get because right now the camber uh there's a little bit of negative in that one maybe a little bit of negative in the the rear not a lot of negative there and that rear the right rear back there i don't have the i showed you guys the the strut is not installed so, but it should help to get a little bit more, 
negative camber so we can get a little bit better grip, especially on turn in. Um, brakes wise, the guy that built the car, I mean, he, he really spared no expense. I mean, he's got uh, four piston calipers, racing pads. I mean, it's just, it's a beast. It stops. Let me tell you something, it'll stop. So, um, some other things I need to do. We already talked about the exhaust. Um, I will be taking care of the oil smoke issue that I talked about. But I have a tool coming in. I ordered a tool so I can get the valve springs off. But basically, pull the timing belt off pull the cam out, and then go underneath. Can't really see, but go underneath there. And There's a couple different methods you can use to hold the valves up. One is you can put compressed air in the cylinder that you're working on, and the compressed air will hold it up, hold the valves up. The other method, which is a little more, well, you don't have to worry about your compressor dying or anything like that, is you use uh, like quarter inch or five sixteenths rope, put a good amount of it down in the cylinder, and then rotate the engine around by hand until you feel a little bit of pressure. And that holds the valves up. Make sure you leave a tail of the rope out, of course. Guys use like a cotter pin or something to make sure the end of the rope can't fall down inside. But then when you get done, you roll the engine down just a little bit, pull the rope out, and go on to the next one. I mean, it's a it's a trick that's been used for years. Works really good. So, uh, just trying to update some things. So, this Pennzoil bottle, that was the original builder's idea of a, uh, oh, a breather bottle, I guess you would call it. I mean, it comes right off the valve cover here, so... Um, I've got a a nice catch can I'm going to put on there and kind of clean that up some so make it look a little bit better. But um, other things I want to do on the exhaust here you can see I've got a I've got a wide band oxygen sensor that way I can kind of keep track of what my air fuel is doing in the different ranges so it'll help me adjust the carburetor a little bit better um, so but I've got this wiring when I went to the autocross last year I just had this just basically run out like this zip tied and as a temporary deal and for autocross where you're not getting over 55 it's fine but I definitely I mean, you can see how temporary it was. You can see where I picked power off of there with a couple of jumper wires. So, but uh, I'll be cleaning that up, um, hard wiring that so that it'll come on when, when the battery switch is on and uh, finding a good place for it to go through the floor. So, which might actually be where that fire extinguisher line is going. But anyways, um, I'm going to be cleaning up some of these wires, maybe even putting them in a loom if I have time. Starting to run out of time because it's March 10th and race season's basically here. And you know, autocross, they run rain or shine. So this is my window net. Um, I put a GoPro mount in there. I'm going to run some power over to it because I already I was having an issue with the Wi-Fi remote. It's a it's a uh, Hero Hero 3 I believe is what I have. And the Wi-Fi remote wasn't working so I wasn't able to shut it off in between runs and of course my last run which was one of my best runs 
I didn't capture anything. So I'm going to direct wire it with one of the GoPro adapters they have. So that'll be the plan there. Um, you've probably seen the numbers. 262 on the side. Um, the car used to be 16. When the previous owner had it, it was 16. And uh, that's great. And nothing against them, but 262. That was the number on my dad's drag boat that he raised back in the 70s. So um, dad's been gone since 97. So we'll just... Uh, I decided to use his number. So one of the other things I want to do, I'm trying to get up here where I can see. So right up in there where you see those holes and that flange, there you can kind of see it. I want to put a fan on there, just an electric, you know, a 12 volt, like a say a computer fan that way in the rain um, windows fog up really quick in a race car so just having the air movement and I'll throw it on a switch over there it's got a defog switch which tells me they meant to do it at some point but they never did so um, I'll just use that switch wire that fan up and just the high speed air movement should be enough to clear it so or keep it clear I should say so uh, some of the other things if it starts doing more than just track days I will upgrade the seat I don't have any information on the seat I don't know how old it is uh, anything like that it's not containment as you can see um, it does do a good job of holding you there like a good bucket seat should. But um, any kind of serious door-to-door -door racing, the seat would have to be updated. So, um, But, uh, yeah, guys, that's, uh, that's my 1985 MR2. We're, uh, we're going to improve it. And like anything else... Any other race car or vehicle or motorcycle or, you know, you can see the crap around my shop here. Well, there's the motorcycle tire right there, but uh, they'll keep you busy. So, hopefully this is kind of an interesting story for you guys. It's a bit of a sentimental deal for me, and uh, we're going to make it a heck of a lot of fun. So, I may get questions on this but I want to let you guys know there is a flat front air dam that goes on here um, it doesn't have a chin spoiler or anything like that at this point I may do that eventually but you can see these mount holes right here is where it goes on and then it wraps around you can kind of see the paint wear from how it mounts on there so, but I thought I would touch base on that real quick before I got questioned.